So how do you level a character in Torchlight Infinite? Then, after you're done leveling, how do you take that character and prepare it for the endgame? How do you do all of that without buying items on the trade house? This was essentially the challenge that I faced doing a speedrun for the Richie Rich challenge. And here's the thing. I'm not good at leveling in games, mostly because I don't practice and I tend to spend way too much time tinkering and testing things. I love knowing how stuff works, and I honestly don't care about going fast. I'm perfectly happy to take my time, find every dead end on the map, and as a result, this was a pretty difficult one for me. Which brings me to my first very important point about how to level in Torchlight Infinite, or how to level in any game to be honest. Don't compare yourself to that streamer you watch on Twitch. Don't compare yourself to your favorite YouTuber. Don't compare yourself to your friend who's way faster than you. Compare yourself to yourself. Try to beat your previous record. And if this is the first character you're leveling, well, then I've got great news. Doesn't matter how long you take, you'll set a new record and you can always do better next time. And so for this challenge, I decided I'll spin to win. It's an archetype that I've played before, primarily in closed beta test three, and something that I was very familiar with. If you want to know more details about my setup or about spin to win in general, then check out the video in the card right now, where I talk about three beginner friendly builds, the first of which is spin to win, and all three would be appropriate as your first character. And so today I'm going to talk about my experiences, leveling a character from one to over level 80, progressing from absolutely nothing to easily being able to clear the Time Mark 6 Traveler, and honestly, probably being ready for Time Mark 7 content. Though some of the later bosses might have been a little rough if I didn't end up upgrading my gear. To start off with, for early levels, I leveled as Flame Slash. Honestly, this was probably my first mistake. I think Leap Attack would have been a better leveling strategy, but Flame Slash converted half of its damage to fire, which made it a lot easier to deal pure fire damage, except for the fact that I forgot that fire conversion was around level 38, so I didn't really get any benefits. Instead, I would have been better off leveling as something like Leap Attack or Berserking Blade and building around pure physical damage. But, oh well, lesson learned, and I still made it to around level 30 within a couple hours when I was able to equip Whirlwind and my build got much, much faster. After equipping Whirlwind and converting my damage fully to fire, things became much smoother. It should be noted, you'll see me dual wielding and maybe using a two-hander here or there. There's no specific hard rule here, just whatever better weapon you get, check the DPS, and put it on. Though, again, your mileage may vary, so feel free to smack the dummy around a little bit just to get a rough idea. Another important tip as you level up is you probably shouldn't do what I did and die on a lot of the major story bosses. This is because I did not pay close enough attention to my life and resistances. I was trying to go fast, and I often overleveled zones, incurring an EXP penalty, then ultimately getting myself in trouble. So, a couple of quick things to check when you die. First, are you way under the level of a zone? If you're four or five levels under, go back to a previous zone and farm a bit. Get some EXP and it'll be way smoother when you come back. Then also keep an eye on your resistances and your health. Early on, 500 to 1000 health is great. As you're getting towards the end of a story, you'll want closer to 2000 for it to be comfortable. And again for res, above 50 is great early on. Later, you'll want that 75, especially erosion resistance before you fight the Traveler. And this was about where part one of my live stream ended. I finished my leveling. I got into the very early time marks and everything was progressing really well. If you want to see the full live stream, something that I very much suggest you do, it will be in the card and down in the description below. If you're wondering, how do I level a build in Torchlight Infinite? Hopefully watching me level will give you a rough idea of what to do or more importantly, what not to do. But once you've leveled that build, how do you take it from zero to hero? How do you go from leveling up to getting into the end game and being able to fight end game bosses. Before I get into that, we're about five minutes into the video, so a quick reminder that if you're enjoying it, be sure to leave a like, and while you're down there, get subscribed, because I'm going to be talking more about Torchlight Infinite and other action RPGs in the near future. If you want more content after this, be sure to check out the cards, maybe you want something completely different, in which case you might like my second channel, 10 Gaming Thoughts, where I have a variety of video essays, and I talk about recent gaming news topics. Before I get back to things, a special thanks to my patrons and channel members for the continued support. More about how you can support at the end of a video. For now, how do you start transitioning into endgame? Well, on my whirlwind build, I found that the early time marks, 1, 2, and 3, were easy enough that I didn't need to do anything new. 
but as I was getting into Time Mark 4 and Time Mark 5, things started to slow down. One of the most important things here is make sure you're able to keep progressing. If you run out of beacons, you won't be able to keep moving forwards in the early stages. Beacons will primarily drop off of bosses, especially beacons for the next tier up. So if you ever find yourself running out of beacons, just do a little bit of boss rushing, kill the Watcher, and you should be good to go. But also, don't get too caught up in minor upgrades for your gear. Your character gets a major damage spike around level 80. This is when you unlock your last hero trait. So very often, just getting to level 80 can get you over that T4 or T5 hump. Of course, do pay attention to your resistances, they go down again when you hit 80, so you'll want to be prepared with your gear in that regard. But don't worry so much about your damage until you're after level 80. And if you aren't doing it SSF style, that is, solo self found without trading, then this would be the ideal time to go on the trade market and try to find a couple items for a few flame elementium that could really make a difference. Just a cheap legendary weapon, for example, with a few hundred DPS, could double or even triple your damage output right around when you hit 80, or maybe a little before if you want to keep your res capped, is also an ideal time for crafting. This should be the point where you're starting to get level 80 drops from bosses. And ideally, you want to only craft on level 85 plus bases. But if those are expensive or otherwise out of your reach, crafting on level 80 will make for a decent stopgap as you can roll T2 mods. In fact, I did a crafting session right before the Traveler, which you'll find towards the end of my full leveling VOD, again linked both in the card and the description below. Now, once it came to Traveler, the most important thing about my preparation was my resists and my defenses. I had about 4 mil DPS, which honestly was way more than I needed, but 4 mil DPS wouldn't have mattered if any one of a Traveler's abilities just instantly one-shot me. A very large portion of a Traveler's damage is erosion, so try to make sure that your erosion resistance is at least 50% and ideally 75%. Also, try to have at least 3,000 health. I had around 4,000 health, plus Harden, plus barrier since I'm using guard support. In other words, my defenses were totally overkill, which is probably because I'm not very good at going fast, but I am good at overthinking things and therefore overpreparing for a boss which I went into expecting to fail. Sometimes when upgrading your build, I know it can be very intimidating. You'll go to the trade house and see items for dozens or hundreds of flame elementium and go, well, I can't possibly afford that, so it's absolutely not worth upgrading. And nothing could be farther from the truth. I made items that had T4 or 5 resistances on them, T3 if I was lucky. I made weapons, one of which didn't even have good damage mods. And like I said at the start, my character's honestly ready to take on T7s as well. I'd struggle a bit with a T7 Traveler. I definitely need a few more levels and a few more gear upgrades, probably a better second weapon. But for clearing T7 maps or fighting some Watchers, I'd definitely be good to go. So what are my overall takeaways? Well first, I'm not sure if I beat Rich Campbell. I'm not sure if I'm faster than a whale, but I do know that I'm a lot faster than my previous self. Before, my time to level and kill the first Traveler was around 20 hours, made harder by the fact that I accidentally skipped the T6 one and went straight to the T7 one. Nothing like self-made hard mode to make your leveling process even harder than it needs to be. This time, it took me around 10 hours from start to finish, and that's an improvement that I'm pretty proud of. The next time you're looking to get over that progression hump, whether you're stuck from T4 or T5, T6 to T7, maybe even T7 to T8. Try to find whatever aspect of your gearing is the weakest. Maybe it's a ring that you know you really should have replaced four or five levels ago. Maybe it's the fact that you just keep dying and you know your erosion resistance isn't capped, or you just have life in res and no additional defenses like armor, damage reduction, etc. I mean, maybe your damage just sucks. And you're wondering, how do I get better? Probably by upgrading your weapon or raising your skill levels. If you have a little patience and address problems as they arise, you'll be able to find success. And if you want to see the full journey from level one all the way through killing a Time Mark 6 Traveler with ease, then please do check out the VOD below and I hope you can learn something from it. If you took part in the Battle Richie Rich challenge, what was your time? And did you beat me? Be sure to let me know down in the comments below. And before I go, a special thanks to my patrons and channel members for the continued support. For as low as $1 a month, you can help make videos just like this one possible. Or you can support completely for free just by getting subscribed. And while you're down there, be sure to leave a like on the video. For more content, YouTube should have a recommendation for you right now, or you can click through one of the resources in the card. And if you wanna hop in and join the conversation for yourself, there's a link to my Discord down in the description 
be sure to react and give yourself a community role to start chatting. That's all for me today. Just remember, you don't have to be better than that friend who's really good at leveling. You don't have to be better than your favorite content creator. You just have to be better than the you of yesterday.